So the video, the second in the series, uh, you may have noticed a very brightly colored building. <laughs> that is our mental health trailer. That is where our main office is. And you can tell it's one of those industrial trailers, which was as ugly as old get out and not very welcoming. So through a project uh, with Dr. Linda Liebenberg out of Dalhousie's uh, Resilience Center, we worked on a project called and Places because we wanted to make sure that um, a lot of the results that we were getting from our larger study were being, you know, the, and some of the changes that we were making were actually taking effect with the young people. And the mural that they painted on the building of, uh, and you really, a picture does not do us justice. You really have to get up close to it because the entire mural tells a story. And it told the story of what youth felt made them resilient despite, you know, uh, being high risk. What were the resilience factors for them? And the resilience factors, the four main themes, were self-esteem, education, family, and language. So all what we did with that information, they put it up on a mural, first of all, to cover a 60-foot really ugly building, and second of all, to be able to communicate to the community what they felt were their resilience factors. Um, and third, for me as a director and our staff, it is a constant reminder that any program, service, or activity we put on we should try and keep in mind those four factors and ensure these programs and services include language, they include culture, self-esteem components, and a connectedness to family. So it is mental health planning. It is community planning. Make sure all of your programs address what your population has told you they want or feel has made them a stronger person. So you may have also noticed in the video the community garden. <laughs> There's a story with that. And at the beginning of the, the <laughs> talk tonight, I had said creating something. <laughs> this is a story of creating a garden and an orchard out of a swamp. Mm -hmm. Sharon was driving into work. There was construction on the highway. She was stopped by the construction. She sh jumped out of her car, followed the lead, what looked like the lead guy, asked him what he was doing with the concrete. The dirt. <laughs> the dirt. <laughs> they, were, they were widening the, the highway on t Highway 216 into Escasoni. Uh, and, and so while I was there, I was like, oh my goodness, I said, where are they going with all of this dirt? <laughs> I said, we're trying to develop our community garden and trying to transform this swampy area that was located next to the mental health tra trailer, uh, which is behind our health center. Um, and I'm like, my goodness, I need to find a person in charge. Tell me who is in charge. I need to know who, where they're going with the dirt. So we found out where they were going with the dirt. And they said, I said, well, can you bring it to us? And so anyway, so. They agreed. 90 tandem truck loads later, <laughs> the swamp was filled. And uh, through the progression of two summers, uh, students came, <laughs> spread dirt, workers went out and spread and dirt. Staff. And staff, staff spread dirt too. <laughs> spread dirt. And we created a flat, grassy area with gardens and trees, fruit trees, flower trees picnic tables, uh, Adirondack chairs, so that we created the youth in the community with the help of staff, created Peace Park. So it's a nice grassy area. Uh, there's also a teepee there and a sweat lodge. So we took what up until before that was a with a boxy square industrial trailer on it and created a place of beauty that was created by staff and community members and youth.